Hi everyone, ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to discuss the fetal circulation. I hope that uh, by now you became familiar with all the details of the macroscopical details of the heart, uh, development of vessels, arteries and veins. So this is going to be mainly recapitulation of uh, the previously learned stuffs. As always, we start with a little bit of, uh, of uh, recapitulation. Uh, if you remember the first semester, I know it's uh, far away by now. In the first semester, you've learned the development of the placenta. Uh, the placenta, uh, finally, uh, this is a very nice uh, time scale diagram of the developing everything. Uh, on the upper side, the maternal. Uh, part of the placenta, the matter now placenta is seen how it grows and develops as the demand of the fetus increases continuously. Uh, this one is basically uh, the, the transformation of the decidua basalis. Uh, on the other side, so facing down, is the fetal part of the placenta, the fetal placenta, so the organ is commonly built up by the fetus and the, and the mother. Uh, just uh, everything is uh, about the exchanges of material between the mother and fetus. On the uh, uh, maternal side, you can see the growing big uh, uh, glands, but uh, short after, uh, the blood vessels uh, uh, open into cavities, as you remember. Uh, while the opposite side, uh, everyone knows that uh, the fetus is uh, floating somewhere here in the amniotic cavity. So that is amniotic epithelium and the trophoblast layer. And as the things gradually grow, uh, chorionic villi are uh, formed on the, on the uh, fetal uh, side of the placenta, uh, which are covered by trophoblast cells. And the core of the villi is formed by the extra embryonic peripheral mesoderm as you remember everything. Uh, so the primary, secondary, tertiary chorionic villi uh, are different according to the, to the structure of them. When only the uh, trophoblast cell, cells uh, proliferate and make an elevation, these are the primary chorionic villi. When the extra embryonic mesoderm invades into the into the center of the villus, and this is seen here, the primary is not illustrated on the drawing, then you call it secondary chorionic villus. And when the umbilical vessels uh, grow capillaries uh, into the center of the villus, then you call it a tertiary villus. This one is not to be mixed uh, with the uh, branches, order of branches of the villus, because uh, the villus gradually grows and grows uh, branches once, the twice, uh, third time, just to increase the surface for the exchange of mater materials. So you can talk about primary branch, secondary branch, tertiary branch, but all these belong to the tertiary chorionic villus. Uh, when everything is fully matured, the placenta, that's uh, how it looks like. Uh, three different aspects are illustrated on this drawing. On this one, you can see the surface of uh, the villus. Uh, maternal blood has been eliminated from it. And this one uh, represents a unit of the placenta, uh, which was called the cotyledon lasting from one placental septum to the other placental septum, but in reality these are something like cylindrical structures. So here you can see the surface of the villus covered by uh, the syncytial trophoblast cells, and some of them has been cut through, transected, just to sh show the uh, structure of the villus. Here you can see the center of the villus, so all the uh, uh, trophoblast layers have been uh, removed from the surface, and then you can see the vessels uh, in the core of the uh, of the villus, and then making the final uh, tiny mini branches within. And this one shows the circulation of the blood within one cotyledon, one unit. Uh, in general, uh, the fresh oxygenated arterious blood enters the cotyledon at the center and peripherally the veins are collected and uh, taking away the used maternal blood. So this one is full of maternal blood, while this one contains the fetal blood. If you uh, see a, a schematic drawing of a villus, again, this one is tertiary villus because uh, there are vessels inside. And uh, one uh, important uh, thing you used to be 
uh, with the uh, colors of, uh, of the vessels in illustrations. And normally the artery appears red and the vein appears blue, but here it is the opposite because the artery is the one which takes from the fetus the used blood uh, into uh, the villus and the refreshed blood uh, from the villus uh, goes back uh, through umbilical uh, vein into the uh, fetus. If cross-section is made uh, from one of the branches of the uh, villus, you can see this one in an early phase of uh, development. In this case, uh, for the uh, uh, movement of any molecules uh, from the maternal blood to the uh, fetal or the opposite side, uh, six layers these uh, molecules should go through, either gas molecules or nutritives or anything. And this one is called uh, the fetomaternal barrier, not the first barrier you uh, come across with. Uh, in the first semester, I don't remember, but in this semester, the blood thymus barrier uh, was discussed, hopefully. So this one is another barrier, and you are going to learn more. Uh, starting because it's fetal matter, not better to start from the uh, capillary of the of the fetus. So uh, first layer is the endothelium of the capillary, and necessarily endothelium should be covered by endothelial base bonds, the lamina. And after that comes core mesenchyme here. So mesenchyme is connective tissue. As a general rule says, between epithelium and other tissues, you always should expect endothelial, endothelial basement lamina to be present. So that's why basement lamina was coming. Uh, the mesenchyme of the uh, extramuric mesoderm is the next to pass through. And after that comes a trophoblast layer. But the trophoblast is epithelium again. So the, uh, on the other side of the mesenchyme, basement lamina is to be found. Uh, there are two layers of the trophoblast uh, cells, as you remember. Uh, in the first layer, closer to the uh, capillary, uh, there are cells separated from each other by membranes, so normal epithelial cells they look like, and therefore we call them cytotrophoblast. And outside, uh, the villus is covered by another layer of trophoblast. Well, uh, during uh, mitotic division, the cells re re remain connected, they remain together, so there is no separation by membrane, and that's why we call it syncytial trophoblast. Other synthesis you, uh, you've learned before, this is a nice example, is the skeletal muscle, the same. Uh, after division, the cells remain together, not being separated from each other. So synthesis of trophoblast is the outer layer, and that's it. So altogether, six layers. But as uh, the demand of the fetus increases, uh, these layers got reduced to increase the uh, exchange of materials. So by the time of the term, uh, at the ninth month, only four layers, the molecules should pass through because capillaries gradually move towards the syncytium, as well as uh, the inner layer of trophoblast, uh, the, uh, the cytotrophoblast layer uh, disappears. At least for uh, light microscope, it disappears. Electromicroscopically, a thin rim of cytoplasm could be recognized. Uh, and this is the, the, the other uh, loss of the, of the layers, is that the, by migrating towards the surface, the capillaries push away the mesenchyme, therefore no need to go through the mesenchyme. So these are the two uh, layers getting lost uh, closer to the term, closer to the end of the pregnancy. So that was uh, the repetition. Uh, what types of materials are uh, coming from the mat mat maternal blood and going to the fetal blood? You can see the list of them. I don't want to list them uh, because you can read. And look what uh, the fetus gives back to the mother. Uh, oh, beautiful uh, materials. Uh, so that is a thankfulness of the fetus. And I think this one lasts after the birth even more uh, pronounced. Uh, some uh, factors are to be mentioned. Because hormones may pass through the barrier, uh, consequences of this could be quite bad. Like uh, if a mother takes synthetic progesterone uh, at uh, the time of pregnancy or before pregnancy, uh, that was applied to, uh, to use in contraception, amenorrhea, or uterine bleeding or so, 
this one results in uh, uh, malformations or uh, problems in the uh, in the newborn fetus, especially if uh, the fetus is a female one, then vaginal carcinoma is likely to uh, develop later during life in these babies, or masculinization happens. You know that this is when the phenotype of a lady resembles to that of a man. And there is another molecule which is. Uh, uh, which is able to pass through the uh, barrier, and uh, this one is a diethyl steel bustrol, which is non steroid estrogen, uh, also applied several times uh, to cure some uh, diseases in women. Uh, and the, almost the same uh, consequences uh, that it results in uh, in, in male uh, uh, newborn urogenital abnormalities, many, many, so hermaphroditism, uh, high pogonadism and any uh, beautiful thing you can imagine could be uh, resulted in this transport of hormones through the barrier. Another important factor that antibodies uh, pass through, which is uh, partly very good because it is responsible for the passive immunity of, uh, uh, of, the, of, the, of the newborn, but also dangerous could be if uh, there is incompatibility between the maternal blood and the fetus blood Rh factor. Uh, everyone knows that uh, this incompatibility would result in erythroblastosis fertilis, which means that uh, uh, the red blood cells uh, of the fetus getting destroyed. Uh, another important consequence viruses and almost all may pass through. And again, I should emphasize the danger of rubella inf inf inflammation, uh, infection, uh, which uh, at least uh, acting very early uh, during pregnancy could result in extremely serious malformations and uh, uh, that one absolute indication of uh, abruption of the pregnancy if it, is, uh, become, if it becomes clear. To show a beautiful, real placenta, uh, everyone uh, Im uh, imagines or understands that this one is the amniotic epithelium, so lining the amniotic cavity here. This is the connection of the baby with the organ, the placenta itself, which occupies uh, one third of the endometrium, this one, uh, as well as you can see the attachment of the umbilical cord to this organ. Uh, if you look at the, the the, the placenta after uh, giving birth, and uh, the mother, uh, the uh, placenta uh, has got two surfaces, of course. So when the uh, birth happens, then the, uh, between the functional layer, stratum functionale, and basal layer, stratum basale, of the uh, decidobasalis, uh, everything gets separated, and everything on top of uh, the, um, the basal layer. Uh, Getting, gets removed from the uterus, and that is that broken surface of the decidobasalis, what you can see, with the units separated by the placental septa, and these are the cotyledons here, and this is the opposite side of uh, the placenta, when you can see the shiny uh, epithelium, uh, initially uh, cuboidal, later becoming flatter and flatter, epithelium, amniotic epithelium lining the amniotic cavity, and you can see the branching umbilical vessels uh, within. Uh, here, the, the vascularization is extremely rich, as we said, uh, just to make the good supply uh, for the growing baby. Uh, extremely good perfusion, uh, something like uh, the lung has got, uh, the organ has got. Uh, this one is mostly repetition. Again, what uh, I should uh, uh, remind you is that uh, into the venous end of the developing heart, cardiac tube, into sinus venosus, there are three pairs of veins opening from the sides, the two common cardinal veins, and closer to the midline, the two umbilical veins and the two vitelline veins uh, next to the midline opening. That's what you can see here as, as well. That is common cardinal vein. This one is the umbilical vein here coming through the umbilical cord. And these are the vitelline veins from the yolk sac uh, taking blood into the sinus venosus. According to this, uh, in the 
umbilical cord, there are uh, some uh, tube-like uh, processes. One should be the vitel line uh, duct here, and the other is the allantois from the caudal end of the, of the, uh, of the uh, embryo protruding into the umbilical cord, and this is so the allantois. And around both of them, uh, there are four vessels, two uh, arteries and two veins, at the uh, early stage at least. But soon, uh, at the second half of the pregnancy, uh, the uh, vital line vessels, vital line arteries and veins get obliterated, as well as one of the veins, uh, umbilical veins also. Uh, I'll just to remind you, this one is the right, which degenerates, and the left is the one which remains open. This is the slide of the umbilical cord you have already seen in the first semester as well you can uh, you can have a look at it in this semester in first semester you just concentrate it to the uh, Wharton's jelly uh, uh, between the vessels and now when you have a good, uh, new look again uh, you should recognize amnionic epithelium and the vessels inside two of them are the arteries, and one is uh, the left umbilical vein. Uh, some of these veins, uh, these vessels, remain, and when you get to the body, you will see these remnants of them. One is the round ligament of the liver, ligamentum teres hepatis, which is the remnant of, uh, of the, one of the umbilical vessels. People used to have problem with this. They used to mix up uh, the remnants of artery, uh, umbilical artery and umbilical vein. But if you remember the previous thing, that there was only one vein, one umbilical vein, and th therefore a single structure should correspond to it, not a paired structure. And if this umbilical vein was connecting the umbilicus with the, uh, the uh, developing liver, then the same should apply to the remnant of it and the round ligament behaves so, so from the umbilicus to the porta hepatis, uh, it leads. So this is obliterated um, left umbilical vein. Uh, also, uh, there is a small thing which connects the inferior vena cava with the round ligament, and this one is ligamentum venosum. This is nothing but the remnant of the ductus venosus of Arantius. Also, uh, you can see something in, uh, in the body most of the bodies nowadays it is going to be present, and this one is a ligament which connects the uh, concavity of the aortic arch with the pulmonary trunk. And the same uh, uh, position, the ductus arteriosus had during fetal life, if you remember, uh, to make the shunt of uh, the blood from um, left to right. And that remains as obliterated ligamentum arteriosum. Now here comes uh, the one which is paired, in fact. If you remember the uh, structure of the abdominal wall and the inner surface of the abdominal wall, you remember the umbilical uh, uh, folds here. There is one median and uh, two medial and two lateral umbilical folds. And in the medial umbilical folds, is the obliterated umbilical uh, artery found as a, a ligament, and that is maybe the umbilical li ligament, you should call it, and that behaves the same as it did during embryonic life uh, from the body of the, uh, of the fetus towards the umbilicus. It leads the blood, uh, the used, the oxygenated blood. So that remains as medial umbilical ligament. A schematic drawing uh, to show the way, and that is how you should, uh, you should tell the story when you pick up the uh, question on the exam. So uh, I used to ask uh, students to uh, imagine that they are red blood cells and they uh, travel through different channels and they should read the street names and tell through which, 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 which vessel they go. Uh, from the um umbilicus, from the placenta through the umbilicus, the umbilical vein, uh, the left umbilical vein comes, and then it uh, uh, fuses with the, uh, uh, with the vein, which gives rise to the portal vein later. This was previously called advehent vein of the liver. Uh, from here, uh, through the inductus venosus, the blood can reach inferior vena cava, and the blood carried by it 
is directed towards the foramen uh, ovale by uh, valva inferior vena cava. So most of the blood uh, reaches uh, to the left atrium. From where, through the right atrium, it is pumped out of the, of the heart through the aorta, uh, through, the, uh, through the aorta. Uh, but uh, this uh, blood gets mixed up with blood coming from the opposite side, from the right side. Uh, only 35% of, of, of the blood uh, distributed by aorta supplies the baby, and most of the blood goes back to, to, to be refreshed in the, in the placenta. Uh, also, uh, you can recognize uh, uh, the uh, right half of the heart, uh, which receives mixed blood from the right atrium, the right uh, ventricle, and pumps out uh, towards the lung, but because the lung has got extremely high resistance, vascular resistance, therefore most of the blood uh, through the ductus arteriosus uh, goes to join uh, the uh, aorta, the arch of the aorta, and gets mixed with that. Uh, well, well, very important is that uh, because of uh, that uh, almost uh, nothing of pulmonary uh, circulation, therefore not for a second uh, these uh, uh, communications between the right and the left half uh, should be closed uh, during embryonic life. One of these uh, communications is through the foramen ovale, uh, and the uh, other one is uh, the arter ductus arteriosus of Botello. These all are responsible for right to left shunts of, uh, of the blood. Uh, as well as when you describe the circulation, always you should emphasize the points of uh, mixage of arterious blood with the venous blood. And if you go uh, step by step, the first happens at porto hepatis. Uh, the reason is that uh, the portal vein uh, carries blood from the GI tract, uh, deoxygenated, so quite wrong blood, blood uh, uh, to the liver. So here there is one mixage. So ductus venosus, inferior vena cava, but inferior vena cava takes blood from the lower half of the body. This is again point of mixage. In the right atrium, when uh, the, uh, the right atrium receives the opening of superior vena cava, which is not uh, illustrated on the drawing, then again, arterious blood gets mixed up with the venous blood, even if uh, most of the venous blood continues down to the uh, right ventricle. Then getting into the left atrium, the pulmonary veins carry uh, deoxygenated blood into the atrium. Uh, not, not much, of course, but uh, still there is chance for the mixage of uh, this still fairly uh, arterious blood with the used blood coming back from the lung. As uh, well as the last uh, point, when the really uh, bad uh, quality blood through the uh, ductus uh, arteriosus gets uh, mixed with uh, the arterious blood of the aorta. So these are to be pointed out. If someone likes these uh, schematic diagrams more than the previous one, then the same should be, uh, uh, should be traced through. So umbilical vein, the left umbilical vein, ductus venus aranci, inferior vena cava, and right atrium. So that is a direct way uh, to, to, to reach the heart. Uh, but uh, should not be forgotten that umbilical vein takes blood to the liver. Uh, some of the blood is pumped through the liver, which receives venous blood from GI tract. And that mixed blood gets mixed with the blood of the inferior vena cava. Uh, into the right atrium, the superior vena cava takes blood from the upper part of the body, uh, as well as the lower part of the body, of the body drains blood to the inferior vena cava. Uh, this blood is distributed by the aorta, since uh, most of the blood from the right atrium carried by inferior vena cava goes through foramen ovale into the left atrium, and that one pumps the blood into the ventricle, which gives rise to the aorta. And the aorta supplies upper part, lower part of the body, plus the internal organs, the GI tract. Uh, but most of the blood, 65%, we said before, through umbilical arteries, return back to the placenta. And just not to uh, forget the pulmonary circulation, which is not, uh, uh, not well developed yet, of course, uh, a couple of drops of blood per minute, I don't know, go through pulmonary trunk to the lungs and getting back through pulmonary veins, they uh, reach the left atrium. Uh, 
uh, most of the blood carried by pulmonary trunk through arterioles, duct, ductus arteriosus, uh, reaches the aorta. So that is the schematic diagram of all the important happenings. Consequences. Uh, the same illustration you can see here. Uh, the better blood, the best blood, uh, quite high in oxygen tension, is pumped to the upper half of the, of the, of the body, uh, to the upper extremities, the head. That's why uh, the babies have got a very unproportionally un un uh, big head when they uh, coming out of the mother. Uh, as well as the liver, because that, that gets the, uh, the best quality of the blood, and therefore extremely huge liver can develop, and as well as the heart, of course. And very important is that during uh, fetal life, embryonic life, the right ventricle uh, is the one which pumps greater volume of the blood, uh, as well as uh, uh, the, it, it gives uh, bigger uh, uh, outflow uh, because it, uh, this, this blood should be pumped through the systemic circulation by the right ventricle. Uh, 1.3 times bigger uh, the ventricular outflow of the right ventricle uh, than that of the left ventricle during fetal life. What happens when uh, birth is uh, happening, so birth is at, at, at time of birth? Uh, separation of uh, the newborn from the mother, of course. This should be divided into two steps. One is uh, a physiological separation. It means that uh, it is reversible, so not a permanent uh, separation, what happens at birth. The first thing what uh, you, everyone knows, that the baby cries out, shouts out uh, very loud. And this is because uh, the baby wants uh, to inhale air when it comes out of the mother. And uh, that uh, results in expansion of alveoli in the lung. This expansion reduces the uh, capillary resistance uh, very considerably. And therefore, the blood pumped through the lungs increases in volume. Uh, this is a sudden happening. Also sudden happening is the loss of the placenta. Uh, if placenta is excluded from the circulation, then the vascular resistance is un 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 unlimitedly high, of course. And uh, the increased work of the left ventricle starts. Now the left ventricle is the one which pumps blood through the body. Uh, two, 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 two times more uh, of the volume. Uh, the blood has got higher level of catecholamines and beta adrenal receptors are expressed by uh, the wall, the myocardium of the left ventricle. So this is uh, responsible for all the happenings. Another thing is uh, happening gradually, time after time. One is uh, the arterios, the ductus arteriosus is gradually uh, closed. Uh, it takes something like uh, half a day uh, or so, uh, this one. The volume uh, of, the, of, of the blood pumped through the ductus uh, gets reduced or even reversed uh, from this side to the, uh, from the left side to the right side. Uh, temporarily, the blood can, can flow. And because of the hypoxia, the hypoxia uh, makes a, a, a traumatic atresia of the vessel, so gradually it becomes obliterated. And another thing what happens is that the uh, uh, septum primum and septum secundum, due to the equalization of the pressure on both sides of foramen ovale, so the two septa are pressed together. Uh, because of the volume of the left atrium uh, is increased due to the high uh, volume of the blood coming into uh, the left atrium. The other aspect is a permanent separation, so which is irreversible, uh, anatomical separation, we, we uh, call this. A uh, couple of months it takes uh, to develop. First is the ligamentum arteriosum uh, degenerates completely as the uh, ductus arteriosum degenerates and ligamentum arteriosum uh, it remains as. Uh, the hypoxia within uh, makes uh, smooth muscle contraction and due to this uh, gradually uh, the vessel obliterates. Uh, there's a problem with the premature infants because the premature infants are less sensitive to hypoxia, therefore less contraction, so more likely the ductus arterius may remain open in premature, as well as uh, the two septa finally completely fuse 
with each other, grow together, and there is no communication between the left and right halves of the heart anymore. Uh, also good to keep in mind that in quite a big percentage of uh, population, there is no anatomical, no closure, no, no, no complete fusion of septum primum and septum secundum. But uh, this one is uh, not a problem till uh, the pressure on both sides of the septa uh, is this, uh, roughly the same. But if increases on one side, especially the right side, uh, due to pulmonary uh, disease, then the uh, foramen uh, can be opened, foramen ovale can be opened again, and this is the patent uh, foramen ovale. You've learned this uh, in, uh, related to the uh, development of the heart. Just a couple of things to be summarized. Uh, what, is the big, what are the biggest differences between the fetal and, and, the, uh, and the newborn circulation? Uh, the uh, gas exchange takes place in the, the placenta, uh, in the fetus, and in the lungs uh, after birth. The pulmonary circulation is almost nothing uh, during fetal life, and that is maximal due to vasodilation in the uh, newborn. Uh, the ventricle, uh, the right one works much more than the left during fetal life, and the opposite applies to the circulation of the newborn. Uh, the two circles, the systemic and the pulmonary circulation, they are parallelly coupled during fetal life and in series they are coupled in the embryonic life. You are going to see the diagram in a minute. As well as the structural changes, what we said before, so I don't want to uh, read them again. Everything has been mentioned before and even illustrated before. So if someone likes this kind of diagram, that is the fetal circulation. Everything what we said before applies. So uh, f blood get, uh, gets mixed with the venous bl blood carried back from the placenta through the umbilical vein, gets mixed up with the venous bl blood collected from the body uh, through the uh, left, uh, the right uh, atrium and foramen ovale. Most of this blood reaches the left half of the heart from where the aorta starts and that distributes the blood to the body, but most of the blood is pumped back to the placenta. Uh, the, uh, through the, the right half of the heart, uh, blood is pumped into the lungs, but there is very small volume of the blood going through, therefore ductus arterius should let the blood to be mixed up with the blood of the uh, aorta uh, during fetal life. Uh, at the time of the birth, two things happened, as you remember. One was the, uh, the septa, uh, interatrial septa, primum and secundum pressed towards each other, and the other is the small muscle contraction in ductus arteriosus. Therefore, these uh, communications gradually uh, get closed, and therefore the, uh, uh, the blood coming from the body carried by superior inferior vena cavi reaches the right half of the heart from where the lungs are supplied. From the lungs, the left half of, of the heart receives blood, aorta originates and supplies the body. Uh, during the anatomical uh, separation, permanent uh, closure of ductus arteriosus and turning into the ligamentum arteriosum happens, and the two septa permanently fuse. Therefore, this big circle is coupled after the small circle, so this one is coupling of the two circulations in series instead of being uh, parallelly coupled in the newborn. If everything goes well, then that is the final result of this, this development of happenings. Thank you very much for the attention.